Hello, everyone. This is Florian Munch from Mining Scout. And today I have a follow up interview uh, with an interesting person, Alex Miskovic, who is president and CEO of Terra Balkanica Resources. Um, we've had an interview a couple of months ago and want to have a follow up here and also a look at the resource market. Hello, Alex. Good afternoon, Florian. Thank you for inviting me again and uh, greetings to all of your audience. Thank you. And uh, thanks for joining. Um, I would like to start um, for people who haven't seen the other interview. Um, uh, so, so we've done uh, some some general introduction on the Tethian Belt, um, where you are located um, in uh, in Eastern Europe, um, and um, the the jurisdictions and so on, and about your, yourself as a person, um, where you come from, and um, yeah, what's uh, and the projects. Um, could you give us? an overview about um, the business model. How do you want to generate um, shareholder value with this company? Sure. Uh, Terra Balkanica Resource Corp is a junior Canadian explorer. We are duly listed on both Canadian Securities Exchange and the uh, Frankfurt Stock Exchange. Uh, we are operating uh, over a portfolio of about 350 square kilometers in the Balkans, uh, primarily two jurisdictions, Serbia and Bosnia. In Bosnia, we have a uh, Via Borzanic project, which comprises three licenses. And on those three licenses, we have identified three different targets. In Serbia, we have two separate licenses, Kaludra and Ceoviste. They're about 130 kilometers combined. And overall, our business model uh, centers on the fact that we are strategically positioned at the doorstep of a continent that's badly starved for resources, being Europe, mm -hmm. and also mining for uh, critical critical metals needed by that continent. We are polymetallic by the nature of our portfolio, so gold and silver, precious metal basket, as well as copper, zinc, lead, antimony. That's just what the nature gives us in the Balkans. Um, at the moment, the company is pursuing its phase two uh, drilling program, uh, which is a continuation from the last year's efforts and a very exciting time because we are uh, about to, we believe, um, well, on some of the targets, we have certainly post-discovery stage. On some other ones, we are about to, to, uh, to enter the discovery stage. So very prospective and opportune moment on the sort of a development, corporate development curve right now for Terra Balkanic. Okay, sounds great. Um, so uh, one project in Bosnia, two in Serbia. Um, the Bosnian project is your flagship. Um, can you elaborate on this a little bit? And especially um, what has happened um, in the last month? So so uh, what, uh, what what's new? So uh, last year in 2022, we conducted a maiden drilling program, about 2,000 meters of drilling. And those three targets I mentioned within the Vyagor Zanik package of licenses are uh, Trumavici, which is a 7.2 kilometer uh, silver dominated uh, epithermal massive sulfide vein hosted uh, system that's very shallow to surface. And that's where prim primary uh, uh, drilling efforts have been focused. We have also discovered uh, a combination of a gold scarn and a porphyry target southeast of Trumavici. And then the third target is just a classical porphyry copper molly target um, that we have also partially drilled last year. Uh, since we spoke last time, Terra has uh, conducted uh, bridge financing back in December of 2022. We are currently in the middle of another round of financing, and the funds from both of these rounds of financing are actively being used right now on the ground. So what is it that we are doing right now? We have uh, completed about 1,000 meters so far of phase two drilling um, since we commenced on the 4th of April of this year. Um, so about 12 or 13 holes after uh, primarily focused on Trumavich. Uh, Trumavich is a system that we know very well geologically. It's not really a mystery to us. It's a southwest trending tabular body between 6 to 12 meters thick that we basically keep on intersecting in progressive step-outs uh, from the place where we focused drilling last year. So last year we were within the area called Trumavich Ridge, and what we've done this year is we've stepped out two times 40 meters to the southeast, so collectively 80 meters to the southeast, and also stepped out in a quite a um, brave and courageous way to the northwest. Mm -hmm. So 650 meters to the northwest. Now, you may ask why such a massive step out. Some people wouldn't even call it a step out because it's an entirely different zone. But we believe the system is continuous or semi-continuous along this 
trend. And the reason why we went all the way up to the Northwest is because we have this wealth of Yugoslav data from the 70s and 80s. And the Yugoslavs have, at that time, uh, did some very preliminary poking around, some preliminary drilling, and they indicated in their archival records that we were privy to, they indicated that the uh, the zone to the northwest uh, featured positive drill intercepts. So we went there, put a couple of drill holes, and again, we're not surprised, we did intercept the same type of mineralization. So now uh, the story really is, as far as the joint is concerned, of slowly closing that gap in a very systematic uh, but, uh, but uh, a prudent way, by relatively uh, significant, but not outlandish step outs of maybe 40 to 50 meters, trying to close that gap and prove the continuity of that body. Uh, I mean, if we just take that segment of 650 meters length and assume that it's even half of it is mineralized, assume a mineable body to about 200 meters depth or so, and assume uh, you know average thickness between seven to 10 meters at a grade of roughly 500 grams per ton silver, uh, equivalent like we've had last year. I mean, all of these are assumptions. We are already talking, you know, you know, upwards of 30, 30 million ounces of silver. Again, this is not, this is just our back of the envelope calculations. What's really encouraging is that Chumovich Ridge is only one of the targets. We have Seotse, we have Yosheva, we have Chumodnitsa. All of those things are basically segments of what seems to be this corridor, as I like to call it, 7.2 kilometers long, which then allows us to basically, by looking at different places, which are only about a kilometer or two apart from each other, keep on adding to that punch and keep on adding to that uh, volume of rock that ultimately will form a, a mineable body. When it comes to other things such as metallurgy, so far, even though we haven't done anything uh, too detailed, we've done only petrographic thin sections, uh, it looks like it's going to be fairly easy to uh, to uh, resolve uh, polymetallic assembly of metals there. And also, again, I'm, I'm going to emphasize one more time just how shallow the system is. This is found, all of these things are found between 30 and 50 meters depth. So it's it's sitting right underneath our feet. Yeah, that uh, that's uh, very important for the feasibility um, uh, in the end, Yeah, How, however for much sure. you find. Um, Absolutely. And continuity and um, how, how big the system actually is, Yeah, that's for you to prove. Um, but with the data you have, um, yeah, it may not all be 41, uh, 43, 101 compliant and, and so on with the resource, um, but you have a strong indication um, what, what you're looking for there. And yeah, absolutely. Proving I mean, it up, the continuity. Yeah, over time. Exactly. I mean, you know, we are certainly not in shortage of targets uh, and good targets. I mean, again, uh -huh. being led by the Yugoslav data on as far as the Chumanic is concerned, but also our geophysical studies, our geochemical sampling, our geologists are continuously in the field looking at the surface expressions of this mineralization and then positioning azimuths and dip angles of these drill holes very prudently so that we can maximize the value gained from, from the drilling. That's just as far as the Chumadich is concerned. Now, obviously, what's going to be, let's say, call it a stage two of the phase two program is that we're going to go back to, we're going to go back to Brezhene. If to remind your audience, Brezhene, is this massive 1.2 kilometer wide magnetic anomaly that mm. spatially is coincident with a geochemical anomaly, which was initially defined by our geologists in 2021. And then, you know, to make it even more exciting, underneath which sits a 600 meter wide conductivity anomaly. So this conductivity and magnetic anomalies obviously come from the airborne geophysics, but the coincidence of all three things are, is very exciting for us. This is a place last year where Terra Volcanica drilled about 90 meters, running 0.61 gram per ton. Uh, and we are still talking gold. about a zone of uh, Viogozanic, the, the flagship. That's right. That's still okay. Viogozanic, mm -hmm. just a different target. This mm -hmm. one is, you know, we didn't actually know it was Karn. Now we do know it's a gold Karn on surface. And then underneath this porphyry, uh, poly, porphyry uh, target that we interpret to be porphyry target, which is a massive conductivity zone. We're going to go back to it. Last year, we stopped the drilling there at about 216 meters depth. We're going to go through the same hole and just continue trucking down all the way to the center of the system, hoping to intercept what we see on the geophysical imagery as being this zone of conductivity. Mm -hmm. uh, perhaps, you know, maybe put another uh, another drill hole there with a, a meaningful step out. And the beauty of the system is just so massive and wide that no matter where you step out, you're bound to hit the same zone that we see in geophysics. So there's no fear 
that you're going to lose a system. This is uh, unlike Chumavici, which is a planar and high-grade tabular body. This is a zone, what we believe, of massive large tonnage mineralization, so there's no fear of losing it. So maybe we, after two holes, we are going to then look at what is it that we've intercepted, pause there, and then and then decide what to do with this particular target within the vehicle setting. Okay, um, a time frame, uh, when can we expect uh, more tar um, uh, results for this drilling? Right. So uh, as far as the uh, Tumavici high-grade silver zone is concerned, we have uh, dispatched uh, this week, we dispatched the uh, analysis to the lab, so we expect the results to be back within a month at the latest. The beauty of, of Ken working in the Balkans is that ALS Serbia in Bor is very efficient and they turn uh, turnaround time is never longer than four weeks, which is great. Um, in the meantime, uh, so let's say within the next five to 10 days, as we are completing Trumanici drilling, we're going to start remobilizing different rig onto a Brezhnev target and start preparation for this drilling of the deep porphyry, porphyry conductivity zone, uh, which then again should start at the latest by 1st of June, and then carry on through June and August. Hopefully within those two months, we can drill those two deep holes that we're going to then, of course, assay and report to the market sometime in September. Mm -hmm. Okay, more drilling, more uh, more uh, reports on the, the drilling that has occurred. Precisely. And I, yeah. I saw that uh, recently um, you announced, um, you confirmed an epithermal gold system and also porphyry copper targets at a different project in Serbia. Um, Correct. Just Thanks so much for reminding it. me. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a very exciting, obviously, the focus so far has been entirely Bosnia, uh, which is where the majority of the of the uh, effort and yeah. the, and the funding has gone, and rightfully so, because we do have a plethora of targets there. But then, not to forget the fact that we are a multi-jurisdictional company. We do have properties in Serbia. Very proud of the of the two targets we have, or two licenses that we have, Kaluva and Selvište. So what we've done with Selvište, we've actually effectively revisited the zone. Uh, we've done some sampling there earlier, back in 2021. Um, and now conducted a fairly dense uh, soil uh, soil sampling grid upon an already known area of high gold mineralization. So we've detected rock chip samples on the surface in the northwestern segment of the Tselvich, the target or Tselvich, the license, which run up to 56 grams per ton gold on the surface. Then you move 100 meters down the road, you can find another sample of 49 grams per ton gold on surface. So these high grade oxidized zones, Gaussian zones that contain high grade gold and silver are just ubiquitous over this zone of about 250 by 250 meters. So, and then again, after running the uh, soil geochemistry study or, or uh, a survey, we've confirmed that the bullseye is centered right on that zone. So basically there's no need to be uh, fancy about this target. The point is we know exactly what needs to be drilled. We're gonna go there uh, hopefully in Q3 of this year and then, obviously, considering the high grade or high grade gold and uh, relatively high prices of gold uh, as of late, we're going to try to tap into that shallow uh, vein hosted sheeted system of arsenopyrite and uh, and quartz veins, and try to basically confirm the fact that we have high grade gold on the surface in the shallow subsurface. Now, this um, soil study and survey that I've uh, mentioned that was ran over that segment of Selvish the license has basically produced something we did not expect. So northeast, about a kilometer northeast of this high-grade gold target, we have also identified a zone of a 900 meter wide bismuth, tellurium, arsenic, gold, copper anomaly on surface. Uh, some of the azurite and the malachite samples that are clearly visible on surface run up to 2.4% copper. Uh, these are again rock chips. These are chunks of uh, out, uh, outcrops on the surface. And of course, as I mentioned, soil is anomalous. So we are now defining this zone that sits at the very edge, northern edge of the license, um, as being very prospective and very uh, interesting for possible porphyry mineralization. We're going to go and do a follow-up there at some point in the future after we've done drilling of the gold target to see can we actually close this anomaly entirely, how wide and how massive it is, and then probably next year try to uh, do something about drilling it. The beauty of Tselvište is that the license has been granted by the Serbian government in uh, November of 2022, so we have plenty of time to explore. There's no need of running in danger of um, of, of running out of time for the license, which is in Serbian, according to Serbian law, uh, maxed to about seven years. So we have plenty of time to explore both of these targets within Tselvište. Yeah. I see you're not running short on uh, interesting targets. 
Um, no. How is the money side? So, so what, what's your what's your plan um, going forward? Right. So, uh, just to remind your audiences, back in December of last year, a short little, um, small little bridge financing of half a million dollars Canadian was just raised, primarily uh, supported by the insiders and the board. The idea was to just basically, you know, provide us with that continuity of operational continuity into the new season and before we start drilling again. We have on the 4th of April announced uh, another financing for again $1 million. A Canadian closed the first tranche of that financing last week uh, for $404,000 and now we're working on the second tranche. Money from that first tranche is being immediately used for the, for the, uh, uh, Tsevich, uh, sorry, for the, um, uh, Viogorzanic and Trumavice drilling. Um, and we are currently sitting on about $200,000 in cash, of course, not counting the money that came from the from the uh, financing. Uh, hopefully, once everything's collected, we're going to have enough to complete the uh, Viogorzanic drilling, including both targets, Brezhen and Trumavice, and then also provide enough to actually promote uh, these results, issue them, put them to the markets, um, and then uh, hopefully uh, at some point in late summer, early early fall, look for another round of financing at that time on the wings of the results that are going to be continuously, systematically and gradually issued to the market over the course of the next three months. Yeah, excellent, Alex. Um, so I see this is a, a real exploration company. Things are happening. Yeah, it's not just a story. And um, yeah, I'm glad uh, yeah, that, that we uh, can report on this. Um, Thank you very much for the interview. Um, I hope that the uh, the general market yeah will play in in our hands here. Yeah, so we see very good gold prices at the moment, um, very good and decent uh, resource prices. Um, so knock on wood, and uh, yeah, and uh, I see good progress here. Thanks so much for the interview, Alex. Thank you so much, Florian. Good to be with you again. Cheers.